Here are a couple of interesting items I was sent to from the Nottingham-based company Enpay. They specialize in precision astro engineering accessories, such as these two, the Enpay Thea and the Enpay Thea 90. And what these are, they're filter drawers. They let you attach your filters to these little holders, which I will call sleds, I just know it, so I'm embracing that quirk right now. And then you drop it into the Thea, into the body, and away you go. So whether you're a sledder or a holder, I'm jumping straight into this and telling you what I think of these items. And we're going to start with the Thea, as it's the cheaper of the two. The Thea is just a no-nonsense astro imaging filter changer. As the name implies, it's for astrophotography. Now, I've been looking for a filter slider like this for a while, so when they offered to send me one for review, I jumped at the chance. The Thea is just a straight-through extension, practically. It has a slot for the filter and the filter sled, one end where you put your camera into, and the other end attaches to the focus tube of your telescope. Also, the sleds themselves are magnetized, there's little magnets on them. You can put it in, and they're not going anywhere. One thing I'm not fond of with the Thea is that they chose to use screws to secure the camera in with. And I would have much rather have seen compression rings. Now, I don't think it would be too much harder to add compression rings to this, nor would I think it would raise the price that much, but I'm not privy to that information. But I would have liked to have seen compression rings. At the time of this video, the Thea will cost you £145, and for that price, you get the, obviously, you get the Thea itself. You get not one, not two, but three magnetized filter sleds, as well as a really sturdy carry case. I think I was jumping on one of these at the International Astronomy Show and it felt weird, but the box was fine. I'm not right. Okay, one thing you need to know about with the Thea is that this adds about 30 millimeters of back focus. And for me, when I was using my EVOSAR ADEB with the reducer in deep sky mode, that meant I couldn't focus the EVOSAR ADEB whilst I was using the Thea. As you can see here, this is where the focal plane for this telescope is, but when I add the Thea into the imaging train, I, I now can't reach focus. I just, just that little bit out, really bothersome. This was extremely saddening, really, because I, like I said, I've been looking for one of these for a while and it was not compatible with a reduced EVOS or ATED. When I was using it at its native focal length for lunar work, though, I needed the extension nose piece. So the Thea came in very handy in that situation. Oh, that's really out of focus. Do you hear that? That is the end of travel. Let me go get one of the end pay accessories. So this is just a normal Thea. Hey, there we go. We're finally in focus. However, it did work really well with a SkyMax 180 Maxitov Cassegrain imaging telescope that was perfectly suitable and really easy to reach focus with this filter changer. This is a really nice item and I like it. I like that it's not trying to be anything fancy. It's just straight to the point. It's a, it's a filter slider. It was just a crying shame that it didn't work on the either side to ED. But if you measure your telescope and you realize that this will actually work and you'll still be able to reach focus, then I recommend looking into one of these theaters. It's, like I said, it's just a wonderful design and a nice bit of engineering. Oh, we're going to look at the Thea 90 now. Now onto the Thea 90. This thing is wonderful. It is a beautiful bit of design. It's well engineered. It's surprisingly heavy. And just, I think it looks gorgeous as well. It has the MP emblazing on the back. And just like the Thea, it comes with not one, not two, but three sleds. And a compression ring in this one. On top of that as well, of course, you get the box. And an optical test report. Now, I can't read one of these. I don't really know what I'm looking at. Someone link me to an article where I can learn to read these, please. Please. The main difference, of course, is that this is a 90 degree diagonal, but the differences don't stop there. Like I've already mentioned the compression ring, but you can also remove the nose piece and attach this directly to your focus tube, if you so wish. And of course, if you need a diagonal or like using a diagonal in your imaging train, then, well, you have a diagonal. The mirror is of wonderful quality, and I can see no degradation in image quality, but I do also admit I don't use diagonals a lot, and I don't have much basis to compare this to. But from what I saw when I was using it, this mirror was really nice. Also, on the back, this plate here can be adjusted with an included Allen key to collimate the mirror. 
Speaking of collimation, the luminar images I'm showing right now was due to collimation of the telescope and not of the Thea 90. And just like with the EvoStar ATED and the Thea, normal Thea, this I could not reach focus with that telescope, as you could imagine. This has a lot more back distance. I think it's about 150 millimeters, but I probably didn't do that measurement accurately. But if you know that you need a diagonal to get focus, then you need a diagonal, here's a diagonal. And at the time of this review, this filter change comes in at 295 pounds. As already mentioned, the Thea and the Thea 90 come with these mini Cerberus cases. And these are rock solid. Uh, as I alluded to, I was jumping on one of these, one of the bigger ones admittedly, at the International Astronomy Show. And whilst I believe there's no footage of it, it was a weird feeling, but the thing did not buckle. It has really snugly fitting foam. Like this Thea 90 is not going anywhere. See what I mean? Not going anywhere. I'm not going to bounce that. I'm not that crazy, but just solid, solid work. And yeah, just how solid these cases are, how nothing is moving in there, the amount of foam and just the construction quality of these, I'm confident to say that your accessories are going to survive almost any kind of trip. Like, I, I feel like I could throw this and it would be fine. I'm not going to, but just feel like I could. Also these little holes here that you could put your padlocks into. And what I have now found out is a pressure equalization valve in the front of the case. The slits themselves are these small, well-manufactured hoops with, like I said, two magnets on them and standard two inch M48 thread so they can accept filters. There aren't many threads to screw into, but there's about three or four, but it's enough to hold a filter and this HA filter is not going anywhere at this time. You get the filter slurred like this and you screw the filter in so the filter sits in the recess and then from there you just take it and as you would expect it just drops in. And then when you're imaging and you finish with that one filter you just pull that out and just drop your next filter in. Or you can drop an empty sled in if you want to do unfiltered imaging. And whilst these have been advertised for imagers I can see them being really useful for visual users as well. Just away you go looking at your target and you can just swap filters in and out on the fly. Also, if you're swapping narrowband filters out when you're using a mono camera, for example, and you don't have a filter wheel, I could see that being useful for that also. The saddest part for me really was not being able to use my EVS R80 ED. I love this telescope and I was thrilled to use the Thea with it. But as I mentioned, I couldn't get to focus. Now, they did loan me a SkyMax 180 Max 12 Cassegrain telescope, and I did try them out with that. And both the Thea and the Thea 90 focused wonderfully with it. I just don't have the infrastructure in place to do deep sky astrophotography with that kind of focal length. I tried it and I couldn't do it, so I have no example images to show you with that respect. And like I said, I did end up using the Thea and the Thea 90 between the EvaStar and the SkyMax for solar system work. And for the moon at 600mm with the EvaStar, I really needed the extension. So this was perfect in that situation, exactly what I needed. And when I was imaging Venus, they both really came into their own. You might know the story behind that one. I accidentally deleted my data. But yeah, they really came into their own element when imaging planets. If I was using my EvoStar at native 600 millimeters more often, then the Thea would be a great addition to my arsenal. But because I don't, I, I can't use this. And it really burns me out because I want it. I just wish, <laughs> I just wish I had a smaller profile. There, I said it. I enjoyed using both products in my time with them. The Thea 90 is just this beautifully engineered, engineered? I really enjoyed using both products with my time with it. The Thea 90 is just this beautifully engineered product. It's just gorgeous. And the Thea is just this no nonsense, no frills attached filter slider. If you observe the extended back focus requirement, particularly with the Thea, or your focus range has that in its budget, then I believe you'll enjoy using the Thea or the Thea 90 if you decide to make that purchase. If you want even more information about this product, there are links to both of them in the video description below. Thanks very much for watching everybody. Now I understand that this is different to my normal reviews. I've not been able to use these products nearly as much as I wanted to. So if you know like it, give it a big fat thumbs down. But if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing for more reviews such as this. And with that, it's time to say clear skies everybody. Keep looking up, keep them cameras clicking. I'll see you later. Thank you.